Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Dorman Lunch and Learn. Today, keys and immobilizers, what you need to know. So we use this in our shop, and we're going to show you how you could make keys and do immobilization on a vehicle. My name is G. Trulia. I'll be your instructor for this hour. We're going to do this in a New York minute. We're going to actually cut keys on this key machine, switch over to the key machine. Okay, we're going to be on that machine there. That is the Triton machine. We're going to cover the following. This webinar has important information on providing your customer with the correct key and programming needed to unlock and start their vehicle. Learn how to provide this important service that can make you money and save the vehicle owner a trip to the dealership or locksmith. Very important. Very important. Different key types we'll be talking about. We're going to look at a mobilizer and live key cutting. We're going to do a couple of key cuts live to show you how easy it is. There's over 400 million, and I bet even more now, used cars that you can't get new cars, right? So used cars are sold in the United States each year, and more often than not, they only come with one key. And that's important to know. There's a persistent and unfulfilled demand for millions of vehicle keys every single year. Dealership keys price are typically cost prohibitive, so many vehicle owners forego obtaining a spare or duplicate key. Okay, and that's what you gotta remember. So when they come in, and this has been super successful here in my shop, we're doing them for other repair shops, and we're doing them for customers. And even Bill had to do one for himself, he only had one key. So well, you, can, you can make keys pretty easily. So why may you want to invest in a key and a mobilizer system? Now, this is not a sales pitch. I want to say that. We use this. I'm not being paid to do this. In my opinion, this is very important information. In fact, for our TST group, we had someone do a key and a mobilizer thing that was very well attended. And that's why I think we got, you know, way over 1,000 people today attending. No start due to a mobilizer issue. This may be a situation where you may want to do it. Vehicle module uh, replacement that may cause a no start condition or a damaged or lost key. Now, I remember my stepdaughter, the kids threw the keys maybe down the toilet or somewhere. And of course, when you got to buy a dealer key, you know, on a late model vehicle, you're talking two, three plus hundred and programming and cutting. That's quite expensive, right? One of the things, the ability to program keys and fobs with an LSID or VSP. Now, I've mentioned this to you many, many times that you need this. You need to go to www.nastf.org. That's www.nastf.org and sign up. It's about 450 bucks right now, but you're going to need this to legally do these keys, and we highly recommend that, okay? So here's the tool we're going to be using, the X-Tool USA system, okay? It has the nitrous key heads, the Triton cutting machine. Yeah, you can come in, Bill. And the nit nitrous uh, complete build set and the scan tool. So that's all important information that is going to help us, and equipment that's going to help us do our job. So where to start? Well, number one, we got to identify the key. Number two, we got to cut the key, and number three, we got to program it. So we're going to take this link right here, and let's hope it works. So Murphy's Law, when you do things live, who knows? This should take us to the internet. Ah, there it goes. And if you would put the camera on the vehicle over there, we are going to look this up. I want to show you that is a Ford Escape. Okay, you're not on the camera. This is a Ford Escape that we're going to be doing. And now we're going to go back to the screen right here. And I am going to look up. And of course, it doesn't show me on that screen. Amazing. I'm going to go to their system and actually look up a Ford, the year, the model. And, and then I'm going to search the information. What it's going to come up and show me is a bunch of keys and a bunch of different fobs. So, I 
There we go. It lost its duplicate info. So that's what I did. I put the year. You can see Ford Escape, 2008. And here's the different keys. Here's what I recommend, and one of the guys from the company called Tyler actually made a good suggestion. He said, use a blank key before programming this brand new virgin key here, okay, we're going to use a blank key. This is a key we're going to cut. This key is not cut at all, okay, maybe it's better if I place it right here. Let's see if they can see that better. Yep. And here's the whole fob setup that is a blank as well. So what we're going to do is come up, cut this key, and I've already made a cut on this one right here. And then we're going to put in this 80 chip. We're going to talk about these different chips. This is an immobilizer chip. Okay. Now get my fat fingers out of the way. I'm going to take that chip and stick it in the key fob right here. See where it's in there? And then I'm just going to press it down and I'm going to put the head all together on it. So you press that, you put it on and give it a little snap. Okay. And we got basically a key that we're going to use in the vehicle. You know, when we show you, we're going to program it and this starts. Why would you want to do that? Well, you know, when you have this type of key right here and you cut it and it don't work, wouldn't that be a pain in the butt and very expensive, right? So you don't want anything being a problem and expensive. So you go with something like this, which we'll be utilizing in a bit, and then you cut that. So we're going to cut those keys live here. So these are all the different options they have on their site. These are the chips on the bottom right here. So right there is the chip setup. Here are the key heads right here. There's the blades. These are pretty cheap. And these are the whole kits. So we have all that in stock, and they have many of them that you can get. And that being said, there we go. It's easy enough to do. So we need to identify the key and set up the Triton machine. We're going to show you how to do that here. I'll just go back here. OK. We're going to cut the key, use a blank key to make sure it works in the cylinder, you know, so it is not a problem. I want to make sure in the key cylinder it has a fob and the key is connected. That's what we're going to do before we put that total system together. We're going to program the key using the nitro scan tool, okay? And that nitro scan tool is right here on, I'm going to have Bill help me in a minute. So here's the nitro tool that we're going to use because many times you're going to need to go, come on, come on. Uh, uh, there we go. We're going to use this tool. I'll leave it in here for Bill. And we're going to show you how to program the key and make some easy money. Okay. So here's their system again, the nitrous keys, the Triton key machine, and the scan tool. That's the three you need. Now, RTFI, read the freaking information for steps needed. This is important, important information here. So pin codes on many of today's vehicles are for extra security. There may be three or four digit pin codes that is needed to program the key to the vehicle. Now you all know that, you gotta get these. The code resides in the module for the immobilizer system. Without the correct key code, the engine will not start. Key codes are available from the OEM manufacturer, the dealer, or other sources. And we'll leave it at that. It is important to have a NASTEF LSID slash VSP, that way you're legal, license to perform this function. Let's take a look at this screenshot off a Chrysler tool, and let's talk about it for a minute. So you have the immobilizer, and you see it's not active. Start enabled. It tells us yes. The value is yes. The range is yes. Drive authorization stash, uh, stat, status, excuse me. 
immobilizer is active, and that's important or the vehicle will not run. Okay. So now we're going to look at this case study that came in here. This was a Ram 3500, was towed in from an independent shop because the engine wouldn't crank. Okay, the engine would crank but would not start after it was already at the Ram dealer. The vehicle was checked out by a few of the dealer's top techs for over a month without any success. After to trying to diagnose the no-start issue, the dealer told the shop that they, had, they needed the following computers. The skim, the overhead module, and the PCM. The dealer already charged the shop for a new key, a WCM, that's wireless control module, and programming. The independent shop had to pay a whopping $890 invoice for a vehicle that would not start. Lucky, when I got this vehicle, or we got this vehicle, a smelly roach coach in the summer. I mean, this thing danked. We had to push it out. We couldn't take the stink in here. There was mouse droppings everywhere because it was laying around and, boo, disgusting. Anyway, using a capable scan tool, I was able to uncover all the issues due to the no star condition. I reprogrammed the VIN in the WCM. Bill and I did this multiple times. Learned all three keys that were provided. My next step was to send the seed code, that's a code from the WCM, to the PCM, checking if it would accept all keys registered in the WCM. That's wireless control module. But it still wouldn't start. After the thinking about how the system works, I changed my game plan, since the old plan wasn't working too swift. My new plan changed my course of action. I proceeded to program the PCM. I said, what in the world do I have to lose? And, you know, two hotlines that we call, two very good hotlines, I ain't going to get into the names, because, you know, I wish I knew everything. I don't. So when you basically reach out to other people to see someone may know something you don't. And we reached out to two hotlines, and they both said, nah, don't program it. That's not going to do anything. Don't bother with that. You need to change all three of them. Well, right after I programmed it, bingo, it worked. The engine started right up. All three keys, two used and one new one, were now successfully registered in the WCM and the PCM. The moral is sometimes you have to think out of the box and have the tools needed to do the job. So this system that we're working on is going to give you the tools needed to actually get into the key and the mobilization systems that you're working on. Did I have a question would be, and by the way, you can type questions in there. Doreen will let me know about them. Do they have every key? The answer is absolutely not. They got most of them. You can cut keys, but we just did a 2022 RAM, that was? 2022 RAM uh, for the post office. I guess they lost a key, and they needed a spare key. Okay, And we were able to cut it and get that vehicle going. So here, you can see on this scan tool to go in, this is the factory YTEC. We went in on this case study vehicle. It was a diesel that makes it a little more difficult. We can see the pin successfully programmed, and the VIN is programmed in there. And the secret, uh, secret key sent to the engine controller is a yes. Prior to that, these were no's. And I highly recommend that you always take screenshots to give to your customer. Why? Because you don't want the customer to say, well, what did you do? Why are you charging me X amount of money for it? Okay. So when everything is done, and now not only the factory tools, but many scan tools are starting to give you this whole topography. And they're showing you everything in blue is good. Anything gray is not good. If you have a little lightning bolt, means you need an update. If it's red, you got a problem. If it's yellow, you got a DTC. Okay? So you could see a whole bunch of different problems by utilizing your scan data. Any questions there? Okay. Now, here's the stuff we're going to do here. We talked about steps one, two, three. Key code, cut the code. Okay? Cut code, pin code, transponder, the chip, programming, registering, key code erase, and initialization. Those are the things that you have to do. We are not going to erase any codes. We got one key for this vehicle, and we are going to make another key. 
We said the key we're going to make so we can utilize everything is going to be the exact type key that's in that vehicle. Okay. This is the, it's a duplicate of what that Ford is. I'll pull the key out so you can see that both of these keys will look pretty similar or almost exact actually. So there's the Ford key, right? Only difference, it says Ford in the back. That don't say Ford, but it's the same thing. So when we go through this, we're going to cut this blank key and make it into this key. We're going to measure we're going to measure off this key right here and cut the blank first. We're going to make sure the blank, actually like this one we made prior, goes in the door. And actually locks it and unlocks it. If it locks it and unlocks it, the key cut is good, right? And it's important to have the key cut correct. Because if it doesn't go in there, it, you know, catches on something, it doesn't turn, it doesn't unlock, then we got a problem. So I'm going to look to see if we have any questions there before I move on. So let's see. So we have a lot of good afternoons. Um, the comment about pin codes seemed to minimize the challenge of getting a code. Okay. Well... It's not easy getting a code, and again, you should go to NASTEF and try to go through, okay, the proper channels in getting them. I'm not saying they're easy. Sometimes dealers will give you a PIN code, but if not, um, again, get a NASTEF license and you won't have a problem getting a PIN code, okay? So some PIN codes are rolling. That is correct. So there are PIN brokers out there. Well, we don't like... We know the real world, if there's mobile guys and stuff and other shops, there are other ways. That's why I put other ways. I am not going to say there are not uh, different ways to skin the cat and get a code, but we're talking about doing this legally, okay? Now, many times these, these tools, these aftermarket tools, could actually do them quite easily, okay? So we're going to use this nitrous tool here, but there are other aftermarket tools that also can come up with stuff and duplicate it. The newer the vehicle, the harder it is. There's no doubt. When we did that 2022, I have the Y-Tech subscription. We had to go to their information and put the VIN in and request and go through all the information they have on file for us to make sure we can get that pin code. If I didn't have an LSID, well, we wouldn't get the code. Does that make sense? Again, you know, we want to do things legally and not break any rules, right? So let's talk about keys. So these have been around for years, metal keys, right? So metal key, no security. Well, you know, they became real easy to duplicate these keys Right? If someone even brought a key to Home Depot, Lowe's, a regular hardware store, someone could cut the key and then get into your vehicle, right? Well, those were no security, and then you had some with a plastic top like this, also with no security. It was just a key, a key cut, and a key cut was not enough security. You could hotwire a vehicle, you know, if it had security on it. Well, we went from absolutely no security, just a key cut, into this. Now, I always tell my guys about this <laughs> because I used to laugh how GM had these little resistors in the key. And you can see here in the picture that they are taking the ohm meter, which you should zero out first, and then go on this side of the key and on the back side and come up with a reading like 147. So if you came up with one four, okay, that would be number six, okay? That would be a number six code, and it would tell you there's the uh, resistance that they want, here's the minimum resistance, and there's the maximum resistance. Once you went out of that range, well, obviously the key didn't work. But these systems were easy to beat. They were easy if you had a decade box. 
A decade box would be a bunch of resistors. So if I pull my decade box out right here, and I'm not saying to do this, but if you had to start the car, couldn't I use a decade box? Sure I can. I can change the resistance by just flipping switches, okay? That's all that key was, was a bunch of resistance. So if I came in and looked at the designated resistance and I put 4,000 ohms, I go up top and I go to, you know, 1,000 and I could add, there's 4,000 right on the bottom. I can put 4,000 if I want to add a little bit more, I could add it, okay? But we're not talking about beating the system, we're talking about starting the vehicle in your shop getting the vehicle back to your customer, right? That's the important part. Getting it back to your customer actually running and operating as designed. So this key, ha this has a key cut and security. I'm going to look at a couple of questions right here or comments. Um, is the VAT key, well, it's moving so quick, it's hard to, info in the handout. Everything you see here is in your handout. So Tyler is telling us, just want to make it clear that you must use an outside source for the required key codes. That is correct, and we talked about that um, before. Pin codes can be pulled through OBD2 with the nitro. That is also correct. And tons of G-up vehicles ended up soldering resistors. <laughs> yeah. Well, these were different ways to beat all of the security. This is why we went to higher security. You know, I always say if man could make it, man could actually beat the system, right? If someone can make a, a lock, someone could pick a lock, right? So let's talk about a high security key here. And this is a Honda, also, call, call, cut a, also called a laser cut or worm cut or sidewinder key. Metal blades, nickel metal brass, typically have plastic tops. Typical have transponder chips, although a few do not. Security in the form of varying the key cut on the key from vehicle to vehicle. Typically double-sided, need to duplicate cutting both sides. So let's take a look. Bill has his key that he gave me for his Honda. It was here before. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So let's take a peek at that key. And I think you can see it is a different cut. It does not look like this type of cut, right? So flipping it over, you can see that that's one type of cut. And here is another type of cut of key. Oop, straighten those out. And you can see we did that one on a key blank to make sure it worked. And the nice thing that uh, we were told by Tyler was the system comes with, and they do have some good tech support, Tyler is one of their guys, comes with this little blue fob. So when you pop it open, easier said than done, That's because I want to pop it open live here. I'm going to stab myself with the screwdriver, I'm sure. But when we pop it open, we stick the key in there. And there it goes. In fact, this one, I forgot, you don't have to pop open. Watch what I did. It fits right in without the lock. And now you have a key that you can go try out in the vehicle without having a nightmare and making one up. Okay, so we'll take that out of the way. Any questions on, on that stuff right there? Then we're going to get on the unit in a bit and actually cut one live. Okay, so those are, this is different type of keys that you may be dealing with nowadays. And there are five types of high security keys. Two track internal, so internal was kind of what I showed you. Then we have two-track external. This would be external here, okay? And four-track 
internal, four track external. Now that becomes a super security key that cannot be easily duplicated without having the right equipment. Does that make sense? So keys are cut by removing material from either the inside or the outside channels of the key blank. The Triton machine will figure this all out for you automatically. Thank God, because you know what? I'm not a locksmith. You know, we have to know a lot of different things working on today's vehicles. This machine makes it easy, okay? I know some of my students out there that are shop owners, they're gonna be watching this and going, hey, I need to get into this because I'm gonna make money off that. And that's what we want, besides getting the car out of the door. We have another car outside, an Audi, that was towed in from another shop, okay, that we cut the key on, and that particular Audi has no security, it's an S4, but not a problem. Let's talk about a mobilizer here. An immobilizer system digitally secures a vehicle by ensuring that only keys which have been properly registered to the vehicle's computer can be used to operate it. Now that's important. That's what an immobilizer does. Basic immobilizer components. The transponder key. Well, didn't I show you? This is a transponder type of key. It's going to send a signal out. And then the ignition coil that's in the key, okay, or in the vehicle, I should say, the immobilizer control unit that's in there. And then we got either the ECM, PCM, and BCM computers that if you change any of these computers, especially on late model vehicles, so when you start dealing with, let's say, 2005 and up, these are pretty smart, sophisticated vehicles that are not just going to let you go in there without having the right equipment to program this key to put it onto the system. This is how vehicles get stolen. This is a reason why NASTEF came out, why the OEs did not want to give codes out, because people would easily steal vehicles. Okay? And by the way, you know when you have some of those 10 minute waits that you go in? Now a lot of these aftermarket tools, including the Nitro, you could bypass it. Okay. But if I use my Ford IDS on that vehicle, I cannot bypass it. I got to wait 10 minutes to go through security. So for us that are not trying to break the law, you know, it's great that we don't have to wait 10 minutes. But the 10 minutes was put in there to prevent someone from just breaking in a vehicle and making a key code, especially with fobs. You know, there was some of these uh, vehicles being stolen down in Florida where they would look for unlocked Chrysler products. They probably had the factory tool. They used their, their Wi-Fi off their phone or a card that they have. They got onto the program and basically they had a blank fob. What they were able to do was start the vehicle up and steal them. Okay. So this is why more security came about and things are tougher to do. Okay. So an immobilizer system the immobilizer system further builds upon the theft deterrent key operated ignition switch because people were able to beat the switch, right? Immobilizers work by automatically or passively interrupting to power to one or more electronic circuits, usually the starter, ignition, or fuel circuits, unless you specific, uh, specifically code a key used in the ignition. Now, years ago, when I had a really nice car and I lived in the Bronx that I used to chain the car to my garage floor, I put a fuel cutoff in and a condition cutoff. I didn't have the luxury of having an immobilizer system on a car. So I made a manual system. That way it would be difficult for someone to steal that vehicle. You cut ignition off, you cut fuel off, and you make it a lot more difficult. Well, this is all done through this immobilizer system. The keys typically employ a transponder or resistor embedded in the head of the key that communicates a code to the engine's management system that allows the engine to start. If the correct code is not recognized by the system or some other means is attempted to start the vehicle, such as hot wiring or breaking the ignition lock cylinder, the system will remain armed, preventing the vehicle from starting. Okay. That is important. This is the way it's intended. Can people beat the system? I'm sure, but again, 
We're not worried about that part right here. We're trying to do it the correct way. Only if the correct key code or other code element is used and recognized by the system will circuits be enabled, allowing the vehicle to start. So that's what a mobilizer actually means. So you need a way to cut the key, because remember, even with transponder fobs or keyless entry, you're still gonna have a key in case the battery dies in the proximity sensor. So a lot of proximity sensors, first of all, you need to tell your customer, hey, where in the world is that keyhole on the vehicle? They're hidden in different places. Some of the Lexus, you gotta take off a little piece of plastic and you gotta be careful doing it. The key is usually, they gotta be one key slot on every vehicle. There could be multiple, but gotta be one. It doesn't always have to be on a driver's door. It could be somewhere else located on the vehicle. So to immobilize the system, a standard key transponder does not contain batteries. There are billions of possible digit ID codes. So the odds of two keys having the same ID are astronomically low. Now, doesn't mean it's impossible. I've never came across two cars that can start up, but who knows, maybe you have. But it's pretty damn low. The receiver unit, the coil, energizes the transponder key, and the chip transmits the key ID to the immobilizer control unit. So if we look at this key here, plus this is a glass chip, okay, that's a 40, and this is a digital 80 chip, that will be equal to that Ford key that'll allow the vehicle to start. Now, example here of this particular Ford key, it's a metal blade. It has a blade or a keyway, well we know that. It has an embedded transponder right up top, one of the most common transponders in the United States. The chip ID is a 4D-680. That's the bit made by Texas Instruments. And the 80 bit is an 80 character of programming data capacity. Older versions use this 40 bit down here, okay? And this is a glass bit. There are no 80 glass bits. And here's the ceramic Texas Instrument 80 chip. This is the one we're using on this vehicle right here. They come in a bag, I think, of 10 in that whole kit, and that way you can program them and have the vehicle start. Now here's a proximity sensor. Now a lot of these, people don't even know where the keys are in there. Our job is to show the customer, hey, you got a key inside there, and here's where that key is behind that plastic panel, or in the rear of the car. Many vehicles, like my old CTSV, basically had the key in the back, okay? So you didn't have it on the door, it was in the back where you could pop the trunk, and then in the trunk, you could manually unlock the doors with a pull cable. And that way, they always have a way for you to get in that vehicle, okay? So there's an emergency key to enter just in case the proximity battery dies. And by the way, if you leave your key, this has happened to me on my Corvette. I left one of my keys in too close proximity to the vehicle. They're always communicating back and forth. If you get metal or tin foil, or if you have one of the Easy Pass bags, so when you get Easy Pass, at least here in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, you get Easy Pass in Massachusetts, you get these little bags that keep the RFI, the radio frequency, from going out, it'll save that. Well, one day I went out running, and when I came back, I couldn't get in my car. I had to pull the key out and go to the lock. This is why it's important to know that. And the vehicle at the time was maybe two years old. Now, that's unusual for a battery to go, but if the key is in close proximity to the vehicle and it keeps communicating back and forth, what's going to happen? It's going to wear that battery down, okay? So we need to be aware of that. So even when the key is in the driver's pocket, it can still unlock or lock the door with a proximity sensor. I'm gonna look at a couple of questions here before we move on to key cutting, and let's see what we got. Okay, nothing there. Okay, we're all good. And good to see you on, Mr. Eric Sharpie. <laughs> all right, so now let's do it live. We're gonna to go to the key machine, and we're gonna Go on here, let me get here, and we're on this camera, right? 
we're going to pick car key. We're going to pick the manufacturer, which is going to be a Ford. We're going to pick the model, which is going to be an Escape. And we got to pick the year, which is going to be 2001 to 2012. It's a 2008, so we'll pick the top one. And it is going to tell us what key blank. That key blank is going to be right here. That's the blank we're going to put in. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to open this lid up. And i got to move this back a bit. Okay, and I got to put the key into trace. That's going to be our original key. We're going to open the drawer up. We're going to stick the key in. And we want to go to this like second line over here. I just got to open this up a little more Ooh. and not make it pop like I made it pop. Not a good thing. So we'll just push that bolt right back through. Put the knob back on. Put the key in. And try to line it up. I'm doing this from my left side, which is not my good side. We found it's always good to lock this one down it's a little allen key here that we left loose when we took it out and now we're going to we're going to read this key wow why is it that loose murphy's law he loaded the key wrong Yep, that I know. So thank you, Tyler. I got to pull this. There we go. Oh yes, yes. Okay. So he told you it was on the wrong side. Thanks, Tyler, for watching. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. There we go. And lock that. Lucky Tyler's watching. And I've only done this a few times, but uh, wrong side. Okay. It's still wrong. There you go. No, it's right. Okay. Uh, all right, so we got that. Okay, build this thing coming up. There we go. Okay. So now let me get this. Did I see that? Okay. So now we're on there and we're going to decode. And it tells us where the jaws are and everything. And we're going to hit decode. It's going to say, okay. And here's what's going on. I don't know if you can see it down there. So now it does its decoding. It's going to check the key out. In the meantime, I'm taking this out because we're going to put this clear blade in right here when we're done to cut first. Okay, so now it's decoded. Now we're going to take this out. We're going to put the blank in, and we're going to go to that second line again. We're going to tighten it up. We're going to shut it, and we're going to hit. Let me get back up here. Up, 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 up. Up, up. 
we're going to hit cut. Got to move my hand out of the way. There's a delay. So we got to hit cut. We're going to hit cut. It's going to tell us one more time cut. And tells us the bit. Please use the two millimeter bit, which is, I'll have to do it this way. Okay. Now, the other thing also I should tell you about that is, let me pull back here and show you there are a bunch of different bits in here. There are bits that check the key to read it, and there's two different type of bits. There are also different blocks that you can use. There's A, B, C, D. We happen to be on D here. And we're going to hit OK. It's going to warn us again, make sure the jaws are closed. And you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And now it's going through its process of checking out where everything is on it, and then it should start cutting. I don't know if you could hear that, but it's spinning, ready to cut. And it is cutting the key. So I go into the dentist, right? And again, when we're done cutting, we're going to throw it in this fob fits right in just to see if it unlocks and locks the door. And then we're going to use a key we've already cut that has the transponder chip in it. Yeah, I'm sorry about your, your problem. So now we take it off. There's always a good thing to do is clean off all your, your metal debris and get some uh, metal splinters, right? Nothing better than that. But clean it all up. Loosen this up. Take the key out. Okay. Key is out. I'm going to put it. They can see that, I assume, right? Okay. I'm going to stick this in this fob, right? And now we're going to see if it unlocks the door. Murphy's Law. Let's see if it works. No problem. Okay. So you successfully cut a key. Now I'm going to have Bill help me uh, on this next thing after I cut one more key right here. We're going to use this key, which is a transponder key that comes in the kit. We're going to put it in. It's already decoded, so all we got to do is co uh, cut. We're going to go to that second line. We're going to lock it down. And you see, when you have it in the right hole, how easy it is? But I'm not used to working on my left side, so thanks, Tyler. All right, I'm going to hit cut. We're going to hit cut again. OK. OK. And it's going to do its thing. So now this vehicle is going to have a spare key that could basically start the vehicle, unlock it, and do everything. It'll have three spare keys, I think, when we're done. And by the way, you've got to be careful how many keys you can program into a vehicle. I believe this Ford tells you 10. You could always erase them. But um, always know how many you can put in. So there it goes. It's going to do its cut again. You're poor ears. I'll look for some questions here or comments. Okay, so Tyler, thanks for answering some of the questions there. People are asking about uh, some of the heavy-duty stuff and uh, the uh, different adapters. You can do round keys. You can do a whole bunch of different keys here. Yeah. Cool. So
So Tyler, who is on the chat that you could ask questions to about pricing or technical stuff, he works for the company and uh, he, he was at the TST big event with us recently and showed us a couple of things. This does go on the internet to be updated. It is pretty easy to utilize this machine. Um, again, you know, not a real hard system to use. And Bill, are you ready to pop in the vehicle? Of course, we are coming on. Okay. So we just cut two keys, I don't know, in a few minutes. Here's the original key. Here's the transponder key. Okay, so the new key works as well. Lock. Unlock. All right. He's going to need the original key to, to put it in the ignition. And first thing I would always suggest is make sure the original key starts the vehicle up. So why don't we try that? And then what we're going to do is go in to the tool here. Great. And built. Let's roll through that. And we're going to use the key that we put the chip in first. OK. So it's going to ask us what we want to do. The screenshot here on a mobilizer comes up. We're going to pick Ford USA up top. And it is going through. It basically is going to tell you when to put the new key in that you want to program. So we're going to do, how are we going to do it? By vehicle. And we're going to do a mobilizer. These are the things here. And then we're going to pick Ford Escape. And 2008 to 2012. And they have type 1 or type 2. Type 2, I think, is remote start. And Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe this is a type 1 when we programmed one. OK, we're going to go in with the key. And it says, insert the new key into the ignition. So the new key is going to be the transponder key, the chip one. And then it's going to say, turn it on. You hear it beeping. And now it has. I'll show you this screen here. Do you need the bypass 10 minute wait? That may be difficult to see. Maybe I'll stick it here for a second. The other camera. OK, so ask, do you want to wait? So of course, we don't want to wait 10 minutes, because I only have like 11 minutes left with you at the most. So we're going to say no. Or oh, yes, rather, excuse me. We're going to say yes, we're going to forego the 10 minute wait. All right, it went. OK, went through. It's doing its thing. And now let's see if it starts the vehicle. Okay, and here's cool. Give me that chip key again. Okay. Field off. Yeah. So here's the key that did that. We can try now the new key we just cut, not the Ford key. Let's try to do that one. So you gotta go, you gotta back out of it. We gotta okay. program it. Go back out, Bill, probably try to program that one. So go back into escape. And let's see, add a key. OK, new key is inserted, right? That's yep. that one we just cut. OK. Yep. So we're going to hit yes. We're going to bypass it. OK. Now let's see if it starts. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So what we have is a couple of keys for the vehicle that really you can see is not hard to do. And you can make yourself money and keep your customer at your shop. 
You know, a lot of these lunch and learns are quick within an hour that we have to kind of give you some information, okay? And this information, in my opinion, is good. We showed you other things, lab scopes, different tools from other companies. This is something you may want to add to your shop, okay? It's like saying, well, you know, I don't do 1234 YF yet. There's not enough of them. If you don't even let people know that you're doing this, like what I'm going to do with a little part of this video, I'm going to put it on my auto clinic website, okay? So customers out there know that they can come and get keys cut here, or maybe other people, right? If you don't let people know that you can do it, they'll go elsewhere. It's the same with hybrids and EVs. Customers don't know you can work on it. They're not going to come to you, okay? So we are close to the end. I'm going to look at some stuff while we have this up here. Let me see what other stuff here. Um, um, I can't tell you what I'm charging the customer for the service. There are prices um, up on the website that are your cost. I would suggest, like we do, is look around to see what you can get for the price. That means call the dealer. The dealer is usually way, way more money, okay? Um, a snap-on edge, would it work for the immobilizer? Yes, we could also say we have uh, Top Don, we have Autel. You can use a lot of other stuff if you just wanted to buy the machine. And thank you, Scott, for popping in there. Um, let's see other stuff here. Yeah, so a lot of the scan tools will work. Where can you find out how many keys can be cut? So Greg, where you would do that is go in and it tells you on the scan tool the maximum amount. So that is important. I thought you were out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you came out of retirement. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Greg. Um, but that is a good question. So where could you find that? Now, you got to be aware that if you go over the amount, you could program the key all you want. It's not going to accept it. Different companies have different amounts. Now, I know when we are doing some of the police cars, you could go in and you can just keep adding keys or fobs. There is a way in the factory tools to get bypass some of those key limits. But you could always delete a key. So if I don't have, um, let's say the keys are lost, or, and you got to be careful with situations like this. Where was I? I think, it was, I think I was in a hardware store, and someone came in and wanted to get a bunch of keys cut and were asking if the other keys can be removed from a vehicle. So, you know, when you see a disgruntled significant other, doesn't matter male or female, you got to be careful what you do. You want to make sure whoever brings you in the vehicle and the key has the right ownership of the vehicle. That means maybe ask for the registration and ask for an ID if you don't know the people. I mean, in most cases, we know the customer. Although, Bill, we just had that lady in recently. She asked us to check her car out for some sort of tracker on it. And I looked at her. No one has ever asked me in all the years. You know, she said, I want you to look. I'm going through an acrimonious divorce. Could you check my car out for a transponder? You know, I guess so. <laughs> we looked everywhere on the car. We didn't find anything. Maybe it was just paranoia. But obviously, people do this type of stuff. And by the way, if it has a system like OnStar, you can find where the vehicle is, and only the master person on the account would be able to do something. Is why I bring that up here. If it is not their vehicle, be very, very careful in cutting a key or programming a key for that vehicle. You don't want to be held liable for anything. And once again, go to www.nastf.org because you need to be a member. Of course, if you just stole a car last week, well, guess what? You're not getting vetted to get that license. But once you do, and most of you are all good guys out there and gals, you can basically get the license. And if you work on the Audi and Volkswagen, you're going to want to contact Audi and Volkswagen with your NASTEF license pay a $100 fee, and basically they're going to vet you in Germany. Once you get the okay, you could program these vehicles. 
Okay. So there are other ways out there. There are different companies that are out there with a tool that they remote in, but they do a background check on you themselves. They got some sort of deal that they're working with NASTEF as an experiment. If you're on one of those systems, well, I guess you're okay. But I rather have a NASTEF license so you can do just about everything. So this Triton machine right here is easy to use, okay, can make you money, can save your customer time from going back and forth to the dealer or a locksmith, and locksmiths come out, they're not cheap. We have a guy that drives around here with a van and hits a lot of shops. And if he comes, it's not gonna be cheap, okay? So you gotta remember that, you can make a lot of keys. With that said, I'm gonna ask you if there's any questions, but I'm gonna give us a plug for TST coming up in the month of April here. TST uh, Wednesday, April 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a three plus hour webinar. It's 20 bucks for our TST members. Non-members are $40. It's lab scope, setup, usage, and diagnosing. Learn how to use and get the most out of that lab scope that has a lot of dust on it, okay? Now, it doesn't matter what brand you have. We'll be playing with all of them, Pico, eScope, Snap-on, and Autel. Those are the co common ones out there. And we'll do live hands-on demonstration and more. Downloadable handout is included. And I will be the instructor, so you'll have to deal with me. Our instructor we had come in for this particular month had another issue, so we have to delay George for another time. Let me see if we have any questions before we call it a day. Okay, so I don't really see anything there. I'm gonna say, what did you think of this? Was this helpful to give you some information? You know, to say, hey, maybe I wanna think about this. Maybe I wanna contact Scott and Tyler and see what this is all about. Or you're welcome to contact me at GT at attstraining.com. That's GT at attstraining.com. And I could hook you up with Scott and you could take it from there, okay? Now there are plenty of big companies that do sell this equipment. I seen one where in Napa Auto Care, I seen a big thing in the flyer. The training on this is minimal. I mean, it's really not that hard. If I'm on my good side, I can see better or dead in front of it without the camera there. It's not hard to do. If you don't put it in right, the key's not gonna cut it correctly. Does that make sense? So it is a very simple system. On behalf of myself, G Trulia, and Dorman Products, we wanna thank you for joining us for our TST, uh, TST, our Dorman, excuse me, Lunch and Learn, get TST on the brain. Dorman, Lunch and Learn, we'll see you next month to you and your family. A very happy Easter if that applies. Not sure when, is it Passover? The other thing, not sure when that is or was. Happy on all of them. We'll see you next time. Thank you again for your time. If you thought it was helpful, by the way, type in the letter Y. Helpful, letter Y. Not helpful, letter N. Y or N. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you.